Hello, so in this class we're gonna talk about the pandas library. Again the goals are a very basic understanding of pandas and what it is, what kind of functions it has and uh, again the goal is so anybody who wants to learn pandas later or is comes across the library can easily start to use use it. What is pandas? Pandas is basically built on top of NumPy or you can say that it has more functionality than NumPy. It can do everything that NumPy can and more. Okay. And it's also like uh, an efficient uh, library. It's very fast. So in um, analysis uh, these days it is being used a lot more sometimes even more than uh, numpy like in some kind of projects why because it has built-in support to uh, get data from a number of sources whether it's c uh, like comma separated values csvs excel sheets html json sql connect to different types of databases and so on so you can pull data from all these different types of sources and also write to those sources okay Similar to any library, you import pandas as pd uh, to install again pip3 uh, install pandas. Uh, so the pandas is the name of library as you can use it anything, ps, pn, whatever. Uh, so what it is, is that it is like similar to numpy. Numpy's basic uh, data structure is an array. Here, the array is called a series and then the other thing is called a data frame. Series is just like it says it's a labeled homogeneous array but it's one dimensional. So series you can think of it as a one dimensional array and then for 2D and so on uh, data structures that can be heterogeneous is a data frame. So this is again a little more powerful than NumPy because you can have heterogeneous uh, data in columns. So let's look start looking at these data structures. Starting with what is a uh, series in pandas. So pandas series are one dimensional arrays of any kind of data. Okay, so they don't have to be like integer data. It can be anything. For instance, how do you create them just like uh, NumPy? You pass an object here. The object is a list dot series and the series is created. When you try to see it, it gives an index and the value of that index. So here it says it's an indexed array or labeled and indices can be labeled. So it's indexed array of data. Okay. So we created this when you see this. 0th index is 1, 1st index 5, 2, 3 and then the data type is. So all these numbers are 64 bit integers. Okay. So like I said these are indices and your values are here. Why specify these? Because in uh, pandas there is like there are functions with which you can see both of these. So if you want to see the values, you say, give me the values of this uh, series. So series name dot values will show you the values. Series name dot index and it will uh, give you the indices. So for instance, here it says that the index starts at zero, right? So index starts at zero. It stops at four. And again, this is just like a range. So this is the first to exclude. So it starts at zero. First to exclude is four. The step is one. Meaning from one index to go to another, you just add one. Okay. Then here it says that it's a one dimensional indexed or labeled array of data. Okay. So when you have indices, you can name your indices as well meaning you can assign values to those indices. How? 
like this so here we are saying that this create a series and the indices on that series are this 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 so a b c d so when you see the uh, series you see that 0 1 2 3 that we saw in the previous slide 0 1 2 3 they are replaced and they are now labeled as a b c d okay hence it's an indexed which can be labeled array of data okay you see values just like that when you see indices it will say a b c d now it doesn't say a start stop or step because now these are labeled so it says that the data type of these labels are they are just considered as objects and then just similar to lists arrays that we saw earlier if you want to get to a specific member you give the series name and in the square brackets you need to put the index you can put 0 1 2 3 but here since they're already labeled you can give the uh, label as well so here go to this series get this label answer is one go to this series get this label answer is five okay and so on you can do or see multiple labels so here we just omitted c so a b d i only want these so only those values are shown the c8 this uh, member is not shown okay then operations so operations on these series uh, preserve the indices meaning that uh, if you do anything like perform any operations it will not change the indices or anything example this is our series these are the labels that we gave to all the indices so 1580 are these uh, labels okay now if we say each to the power or this series to the power of 2 again it's since it's built on top of uh, numpy behaves the same way so series each member of the series raised to the power 2 so it becomes 2 25 64 and 0 to the power 2 is 0 so operations preserve the indices meaning that you performed an operation but indices didn't change okay and here we just performed the operation on this series called A. We did not change that series. Okay. Hence, any uh, other operation that you want to perform, you can perform on the same series as well. For example, after this, if we give this command. So what is this command? This is saying, in this series, give me all the values that are greater than 0 okay series is a this is the original one all the indices that are greater than uh, or all the members that are greater than zero of this series so one five eight this is zero so this will not be shown okay so go to this series get me all the members that are greater than zero is this result Then since we have indices, so you can think of it as like a key value pair, right? So key C is value is eight, right? So what did we learn about key value pairs? If you remember, like in our normal Python, which data structure was key value pairs? Dictionaries, right? So dictionary is a key value pair, key value, key value, key value, and so on right so you can convert a dictionary into a series as well so if this is your dictionary you just say series and pass that object just like we have been passing lists until now you can just pass a dictionary so you can imagine what will it create a b c d are the indices and values are 2 4 10 8 and so on okay clear 
okay next thing so the past indices will be created in the given order okay fair enough if there is no associated value its value will be not a number or nan for example if this is our dictionary right and these are let's say our labels do we need new labels no we do not just in case just showing you an example that if you have labels already you can overwrite those labels as well how in this manner so already given labels if you create a dictionary uh, oops if you create a series from a dictionary this is what's created right now if you want to give your own labels let's call them letters here now you have i and then a b c d do you see any i up here no right so there is no i in this dictionary so that's what this is saying that if that index is not present you will get a not a number value so when you create a series on this dictionary but now that you are saying my labels are this or my indices are this and what is this this is letters letters is uh, this list the first one is i so it goes searches for an i in this uh, dictionary none so it says i is not a number then it goes through a b c d all the way to h so all these values are input in there okay then when it gets to j there is no j in the list as well sorry in the dictionary as well so you get j not a number so that's what being said here that if there is no associated value to the past index so these are the indices past its value will be not a number so nan up here nan down here the rest are the same okay then unlike numpy so if you remember numpy numpy if the uh, uh, two arrays are not of the same uh, cardinalities then some operations fail right so in uh, pandas the series indices automatically align with the operators or the operations so for instance if this is our b that we just created this is our b and a was the original structure let's say if we say a plus b so all the indices will be aligned so a goes to a so it becomes 4 and we are adding a to b so a a takes precedence why didn't we put i or the i didn't get up on the top because a to A is added first, then B, and then L, oh, sorry, A, B, C, all the way to L, right? So A takes precedence because they are automatically aligned and, and they will be like in this order A, B, and then it will be C D E F G H I J. I mean, it will take uh, what do you say? Uh, the ascending order, essentially. Okay. So the values that A has has A B L and G. We have A B. We have no L, but we have G, right? So A, B, G will be aligned. So A to A is 2 plus 2 is 4. B, 4 plus 4 is 8. G, 8 plus 8 is 16. There is no L. So L will be have having a value called not a number. And all the other indices that are not present in A will also have not a number. Okay. So that's what it means that if you can add, uh, like you can add 
two different cardin cardinality series as well in pandas okay then you can also check for these not a number why because sometimes let's say you don't want these things in your result okay so what can you do you can just simply use the function is null or is not null okay so here only the first and last record are null right so how do you use it you give pd is null and series name what's the series name here series name is b your statement becomes pd dot is null and you pass b and you can see for the first and the last it's true all the others are false because these are not null hence they are false okay so that's like the basics of series just behaves similar to arrays but a little more powerful okay so the next main data structure in pandas is called a data frame when we talk about a data frame consider it as an excel sheet okay so whenever some uh, data frame comes to mind an excel sheet should come to mind so what do you have in an excel sheet you have rows and you have columns right and you know through experience that in those columns you can have integers you can have text you can one column can be one thing another can be another thing right so you may have different data types in each of the columns first thing second your rows are indexed by those numbers one two three four and in microsoft excel your columns are indexed by a b c d e f g all the way to z then a a b b and so on right so your columns are indexed as well in the same way data frames your rows and columns are indexed right let's take an example so in this example what do you have you have some data and in that data what do you have you have a string colon and then you have a list comma string list so this string is a key value is a whole list key value is a whole list finally key value is a whole list but now the list is numerical right so we can create a data frame of this thing why because because we have columns and we have rows of data when we create a data frame on this variable called data with this command called dot data frame this is what is created so you can see we have three rows because remember we had three uh, records in each so for each record you get a row and columns are the key values so country capital population so capital country population so these are uh, our columns and if you see originally we had country first then capital then population but when we created the data frame the compiler itself put capitals first then the country then the population why it's up to the optimization like the compiler decides which column comes first but we ourselves can specify the order of columns as well okay so this is the original capital comes first let's say you want to bring the country first right how do you do that when you create you can specify columns as well that my columns are country capital then population so if you give specific ordering inside your data frame creation command then this is what comes up so country columns comes first capital then then population okay 
So you can imagine if this thing was in Excel. So this is your row. This is your row and this is your row and these are the columns. Again, data types can be or are different, right? So simple enough, right? Then you can specify the indices of rows as well. Just like we did for series. Here your rows are indexed as 0, 1, 2. You can give each row a name as well. For instance, when we create at creation time, columns gives you the ordering of columns. If you specify the variable index, it will specify the in index names or give the each row a name so first row is named ca the next row is named mx the third row is named us okay do we need to do that not necessarily but sometimes it may be required due to the application requirement okay how do you access columns just like that we've done before uh, through square brackets so let's say to access a specific column which column let's say we want to access country what should be our syntax remember uh, the name array name which is b and in square brackets you give the column name okay something like this so data frame name square brackets column name similar to dictionaries, arrays, and so on. So it will give you the whole country column, along with any labels of rows, or if they're not labeled, it will be 0, 1, 2. Okay. Another convention to use that is data frame name dot any column that you want. For example, data frame name is country dot notation and then you give the attribute name and attribute is the column name okay so same thing you can either use this or this then you can specify rows as well okay so how do you do that for that you need to add a specific or like letters and these are loc ix or ILOC okay if you have row indices you can use either lock or IX with in this manner that go for this data frame go to this location location is this row so it will go to CA get this row Canada Ottawa and population which is 3629 Canada Ottawa 3629 but if you see it doesn't list them in a horizontal manner it lists them vertically so column this is this value column this is this value so Canada Ottawa 36 are listed in uh, this manner and three separate lines not on one straight line in this manner why because that's how the compiler has been designed it could have been output in this manner but this is just the way to output it okay nothing different Then can you get multiple rows? Yes, you can if you give another index name in there. Okay, with the in the LOC, you give another index name. So now you get uh, two rows of data. And now see the difference between the output. Once you have more than one, you cannot keep repeating this. So it is a need to put the data in the same format as it was up here. So just a difference of readability for one, this is more readable for two records, this scheme becomes more readable. Okay. Then in this location command, we are just saying that get us all the attributes or all the column names, right? What if you want to focus only on a specific column? Then this is the command. So to specify a column first, then you specify the row. If you remember in um, arrays or in NumPy, we saw row column index, right? 
that takes precedence but in this case if you want uh, a column you specify the column first then say go to this row so that's only a slight difference but again row column format takes precedence unless you want uh, to work with pandas columns and then get a row then it becomes a little different then to update values is the same you give a specific uh, index and say go update that value so if you give a whole column name and only give one value the whole column is replaced by that right so here we are just saying go to this data frames this column and set the value so you can see population for everybody is set as 25 right what's happening down here so just look at the code first so we are saying in this column right so in population column okay put this series which is 30 325 and 127 for these indices so in the series we give the series itself and we provide the index so remember if you a uh, couple of slides back if you go to the series and see what this thing means right so when you create a series you give the series and here you're saying these are the indices so for index us value is 325 so for this index value is 325 for index mx value is 127 what about the third index nothing was provided right so since no population was provided it comes as not a number okay So length of the data should match the column length. Essentially, if you want to replace uh, or update everything, it should match. Otherwise, not a number is overwritten on whatever the existing value is. Here it was 25, 45. That is gone and now the new value is not a number. Okay. Then if, what if the column does not exist? Right then it will be added as a new column to the data frame example so this is our original frame now we are saying go to this column does this column exist no so it will create it with these uh, values for these indices so us mx ca what if the last ca was not provided what would come in here not a number right then to delete a column you just say delete column name with the frame name and then column name so for instance if this is now our updated uh, frame called b we just say delete or del frame name column name so that whole column is birth rate is gone now okay then can you specify or uh, specifically delete a given row right yes we can we just give it a drop command and then either a row name or a row index so for instance if this is our original frame we say in this frame drop ca so you can see that ca line is gone only these two remain mx and us and drops can also have multiple arguments that are separated by commas then slicing uh, slicing is basically to get a portion or snapshot of the data we'll look at series first so if this is our series so indices data index data index data and so on so a in this 
series called A go to the index called A, which is this. It will get you zero. What are we saying here? Go to this series, get me what's at index one. So remember it's index zero. This is index one. So what's here? This value, which is one. Next, go to this one, A, and get all the indices that start from 1, end at 4, but don't include 4. Remember, begin, first to exclude, first to include, first to exclude. So it starts at index 0. Is that included in here? No, it's not because we started index 1. Okay, so move to index 1, B1, it's included, index 2. C2, D3, it's included. Now the index is 4. Can we get index 4? No, we cannot because we have to first to include, first to exclude. So we stop at index 3, value is 3. Okay. What about this? Okay, so now there's a difference. So if you look at this, when you give the numerics, it's first to include, first to exclude. If you give the index names, then both of them are included. So start here, stop here. So start at A, stop at F. Okay. So that's a slight difference. If it's numeric indices, first to include, first to exclude. If it's uh, names of indices, then it's first to uh, or start from this index, stop at this index, not before this index. Okay? Slight change. Then how do you slice data in a data frame? Just the same manner. You can give uh, column names and then provide any conditions as well. So for instance, if this B is our frame, now we're saying go to this frame and get all the data where in this column value is more than 200. So where are values more than 200 in the population column? Only this row. So US, Washington DC, 325. Right? What are we getting here? Go to this frame, get me the country column and the population column. So country and population are given. Now what are we saying? Go to this um, data frame and get row starting at zero first to exclude is 2, so row is 0, row is 1, the second row is omitted. Okay. So if you just give um, numerics, it operates on a row format. If you give a name, that is the name of the column. Okay, what if you want to give the name of the row? So if you remember from previously, then you have to use the lock command. So dot lock, get me this row. Dot lock, get me these two rows. Okay. Similarly, dot lock, for this row, get these two columns. So if you put a lock, it operates on a row column format. Okay. If you use IX, then you have to provide the um, uh, what do you say the row index that is right. So in IX, we are saying go to this row. Okay, go to this row US. Get me column index zero and column at index uh, one. One, zero, one, two, sorry. So zero, one, two, so column zero is country. 
one is not given get me column two so only these two columns are extracted so zero and two it's not a range it's not a semicolon here it's a um, comma get me these two columns for this row okay and then if you say only i lock i lock means get me this row essentially okay what's row zero is this row one is this so i lock will get you mexico mexico city 127 mexico mexico city 127.5 okay then another thing uh, so the other thing is i want you to focus on this thing so this we already saw so go to this row get me these columns okay what's happening here here we are saying go to this row us and get this column okay remember row column so it gets you 325 if you remember from arrays we said the same could be written in this manner okay however in pandas so in this library if you provide this syntax this creates a copy of the original data and you are working on the copy of the data if you want to actually go and change the original value you have to provide this syntax okay example if you do something like this so this is your original frame we are saying what go to ca okay and population is 37 32 so ideally this should be changed right nan should be now 37 32 however when you write this thing compiler gives you this warning warning is a value is trying to be set on a copy of the slice from the data frame so remember if they are separate if they are separate indices it's a copy and it says that you're trying to set a value to a copy so this won't be allowed okay or it's a, actually a warning saying that you won't get the desired result if you want to put 37 in here the correct syntax is this thing in the same square brackets you do this and the value is overwritten here okay then arithmetic operations we already saw like that a b you add them similarly you have functions available if you have two if you add them uh, if you have two let's say frames you can add them result will be each one added to its corresponding column okay so c is two is two so you get four here six and five is eleven what about d so there is d in b but there is no d column here so in the result you get a d column but everything is a not a number why because three plus nothingness is nothingness seven plus nothingness is not a number and so on okay if you want to add something like this but get the original values let's say three seven eleven you write it something like this that fill the missing values as zeros okay so you say 3 plus 0 will be 3, 7 plus 0 will be 7, 11 plus 0 will be 11, and this new frame is created. Okay? So the difference is, if you see the data types, these are all integers because they were originally integers. For the new column, it is added as floats. Okay? That's the only difference. Otherwise, it will fill the missing values with a 0. 
and you can add them using the add function similarly you can use a dot sub to subtract dot div dot mul so all those functions are available okay and you can either use uh, them directly or you can use a fill value and replace the missing ones with zeros or whatever value you want to give you can have default value of let's say 5 so fill value equals 5 will fill it with all those uh, missing values as as a 5 or treat them as a 5 essentially okay then if you have a data frame let's say a of this form you can a sum it will give you the sum of all the columns so these operate column wise so all these functions sum average max min cumulative sum they're all working on columns okay if you want to deal with rows or get the sum or max or average etc of rows you provide this uh, argument with this those those functions so when you say x is equals one it will sum the row so two plus one is three eight plus seven fifteen plus six is twenty one for this row and so on for other functions okay so remember they operate column wise otherwise if you want to use it you say x is equals one it will operate on the row Similarly, if you describe, use the describe function on a frame, it will give you specific values like the count, the mean, standard deviation, minimum, 25th percentile, 50th, max, and min, and so on. Okay. So it will give you the quant quantitative values for each column. And if there are uh, uh, not a number of values, you can just say skip na equals true inside the parentheses and it will ignore them in the summary. Otherwise, it will include them. Similarly, if you want to drop them all together or drop those rows that have not a number values, you just say dot drop na, drop the not available ones and it will remove those from the result. So two and four are not included in this result because we dropped n a. Similarly here, only the first row has data in all the columns. So only that row is shown, all the other ones are omitted. Okay. And again, if you want to fill values, you use the fill n a function or uh, with whatever value you want to fill in. So for each of these not a number, if you put a zero inside parentheses, you get a zero in those places. You can put four, five, 10, 15, 10,000, whatever value you want. Okay. Another way to do this is you can replace it. Say replace not a number with a zero. So wherever it sees that NAN in that frame, it will replace them with a zero. Okay. Then the real powerful thing of pandas that you can read, write data in different formats, CSV files, JSON, HTML, Excel, uh, SAS, SQL, so on. So here you can see like there are different uh, readers for all these different formats. And then to write Let's say to read from a CSV file, you give the command read underscore CSV to write to CSV. And this is the site where you can see like all the examples and so on. Uh, so we'll just quickly go over uh, CSV. So like I said, you say pd dot read CSV. And then inside parentheses, you give the file name and the type of the separator, whether it's comma separated file uh, and so on. So if you want to use CSVs, you use CSV. If you want, let's say you have a tab separated file or something else, then you can use a read table command, read table function. 
So you give the file name and then the type of separator for this for CSV it's by default a comma. Okay. Then you have other things if you have header uh, equals none or zero you can say whether you want to read the header or not and so on. Example is here. So syntax you give your file name dot csv and if you say index call equals zero meaning there is no index column. If there is you specify the name using this. Then this you can say variable equals this thing and then you get the variable then you say variable dot head and you can see the head the first default five rows. If you say dot tail you can see the last five rows of the data. Okay. Similarly to read csv this is the command you give the file name um, not available or any value that's missing you write this and it will be written null in the uh, in the data frame for that okay then to write you have this command and so on so there are two examples example one and example two the py files are shared uh, just see like what the, what the functions are doing here. It's a read Excel function, meaning that you can read an Excel file with a single sheet. You just give the sheet name. Or if you want multiple sheets, then you write like a loop kind of thing that with pd.xl file and then the Excel file path as XLS and that XLS comes down here inside the read excel function and each data frame or each sheet is read as a de separate data frame okay so that's the only difference here the data frame is read into one variable here since each sheet will be another data frame you can write like a loop kind of thing with this essentially a loop that will read one excel sheet put it in this read the other excel sheet put it in this variable okay so that is essentially all for the basics. So the files are there, the py files, go over them, read them. You should be able to understand them by now. Since it's almost the end of the course, if you cannot uh, retake the course, I guess. No, I mean, on serious note, I think by now you should be able to understand these files because they're very uh, fairly basic. Okay, so that is it.